Hello, Anin Bonjour. Welcome, everybody. My name is Stephen McCoy, and I'm going to be moderating the panel for today. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, everybody for, for coming here and uh, knowledge that we are on the 1850 Robinson here on Treaty Territory. It'll be um, Pate and Atikmashig First Nation territories. Recording in progress. So we have an opening statement, so I'm going to pass this off to our chair of the Robinson Huron Litigation Fund, and uh, he's going to welcome and do an opening statement for everybody. Amigwech, I'm going to ask uh, Ogemar Duke Pelche from Wequemkong to uh, read the opening statement. Amigwech, Amigwech Mike. Nigan also going to begin indigenous cause, Kondo Dem. Gimanda Wikwem Kong Nashke Minatamage and Kunot Moknanuk Litigation Management Committee Ajna Kazot. So good after or good morning everyone. My name is Duke Pelche. I'm the elected chief from Wikwem Kong Sita Territory and a member of the Litigation Management Committee for the Robinson Huron Treaty Litigation Fund. And I'm here as a spokesperson on behalf of the, the signatories of the 1850 Robinson-Huron Treaty. And I want to welcome everyone to the Robinson-Huron Anishinaabe Territory. Chimigwech to Wanabade and Tikmekshing, our brothers and sisters who are hosting our gathering here today in Swakamuk. I want to thank Leroy Bennett for conducting prayer and ceremony for our gathering, as well as Martina Hozamik for rendering us some beautiful water ceremony in honoring our, our creation. I wanna thank everyone for your attendance here this morning. We have some of our chiefs here, and I'd like to introduce them. Uh, Chief Scott McLeod from Nipsing First Nation, Chief Irene Kells from Jibasing, Chief Adam Powers from Shwanaga, and we have Chief Craig Nudstai from Tikmekshing, and also uh, here to my left, uh, Gimadine Sayers from Batchewana. And we have uh, many others that are listening in online. So Chimigwech for, for uh, being here with us. And I also want to acknowledge our legal counsel, um, Dave Naogabo and your team. I wanna thank you for all of your work and uh, the great work that uh, all members of the, the team have been doing on our behalf as well as the Litigation Management Committee. Uh, our uh, leader here, Mike Restool, a chairperson, as well as Peter Reckley and, and the rest of the team that uh, support all the work that we're doing. First of all, I want to acknowledge our ancestors who had the vision in 1850 to ensure that we had the ability to benefit from our lands and resources in the face of massive settlement and massive resource development and not to have live on the handout of $4 per beneficiary per year. As we know, this has uh, been in place since 1874, and this is something why, why we're here today. We also want to thank all of these ancestors who have guided us and strengthened us on the steps toward achieving these intentions and expectations regarding the treaty. Through ceremony and prayers, our ancestors and the creators have aided the results thus far. We also thank our elders in the territories for keeping the Robinson-Huron Treaty alive through their steadfast belief and determination to ensure the well-being and self-determination of our peoples. Some of these elders had a direct role in the litigation and we have to thank them for coming forward and assisting us in bringing our stories and our interpretations of the treaty into the court systems. And the courts have heard them. The decision released on Friday by, by the Ontario Court of Appeal affirms the enforceability of the treaty, the enforceability of the resource revenue provision regarding a share of the wealth from the territory for the original Anishinaabe inhabitants. The court held that the parties through negotiations or the court in stage three must now determine the form, level, and aim of the sharing that the augmentation clause requires. 
The court completely rejected the Crown defenses relating to immunity and limitations. Since 2017, we have issued many letters to the federal and provincial governments and their leaders asking for negotiations to settle this case. We have also sent a memorial and a petition to the Governor General and to the Lieutenant Governor of Ontario requesting their attention and support for getting the federal and provincial governments to act honorably. We have been successful in gaining the support of the courts in the first two stages, in two appeals, in various motions, including a request by Ontario to reopen the trial for new evidence and costs. We have received the support from sponsors of a petition that asks Ontario to abandon their litigation approach in favor of a negotiated settlement. We have received support from many of the civic leaders in Northern Ontario, in the treaty territory, including the mayors of the cities of Sault Ste. Marie, Sudbury, North Bay, Perry Sound, Espanola, Elliott Lake. We thank these leaders for their support and for their acknowledgement of the economic benefits that settlement will bring to the North, Northeastern Ontario communities and this region. We have received notice from Canada that they are ready to negotiate a settlement. And in that offer, we know it is time now for the government of Ontario to embrace the reality, to embrace the facts, to embrace our history, and also to embrace the rule of law relating to the Robinson-Huron Treaty. We want to thank all of our people for being so resilient and being so patient in suffering the negative consequences from delayed justice. As leaders of the Lake Huron Anishinaabe, we believe we should immediately begin meaningful negotiations to implement the decisions of Ontario's courts of law. Miigwech. I'm going to pass it on for, to Gimadine Sayers for additional commentary. Anin Bojo, Ogaman Nemanagojing Guyakas at Nishnaka's Chief Dean Sayers. Good morning, everyone. Kinuya, Miigwech Kima Pelche. I acknowledge uh, this beautiful land we're on here in uh, Sudbury and the lands that are looked after by our brothers and the indigenous communities here in proximity to Sudbury, uh, Wanapate and uh, Dokis and uh, Tikamikshing and uh, Nipissing, they're a little closer than we are. I'm from Baoting, Baojuanung, and I'm here. I brought one of my elders with me today. Uh, it's nice to uh, have him be here and witness uh, this incredible, incredible moment in, in the history of our lands here uh, in Canada on Turtle Island. And um, all of the viewers, all of the readers um, are witnessing a beautiful history unfold. And uh, this morning as the chiefs met in prayer, we talked about that. We talked about how wonderful it is that we are chosen to be uh, a part of this momentous occasion, as are all Ontario citizens. They are all going to be able to witness and tell their kids and their grandkids about the Anishinaabek the indigenous, the beautiful indigenous people of the area, once again, reclaiming their inheritance, reclaiming those things that were promised to us as a people and being on the right side of history. And that's what I wanted to talk about a little more in depth. I wanted to talk a little bit about um, a correspondence that we are sending to the representatives of the Crown. Uh, we call them Ontario today, but they've inherited an obligation on behalf of all of you citizens in Ontario they inherited the honor of not only the crown, but they inherited the honor of our ancestors, the historic leadership that all contemplated and ceremonially uh, eventually entered into this promise, this beautiful promise of a equitable quality of life for all of us as we shared these lands 
as we were able to recognize the beauty of each other's way of lives, our languages, our culture, our laws, that we were all going to be able to live side by side in a sharing relationship. We have to unfortunately go down this road. And as uh, Gemma Pelche was saying here, uh, uh, we want to uh, encourage the, the government of Ontario, much like Canada, to come equipped to a table to have these discussions that are really necessary in order to make sure that we're aligning ourselves with those original expectations. So I'm gonna read to you correspondence that we've collectively put together and we'll sign off on it in the near future in a few minutes here. And it's addressed to the Honorable Greg Rickford, the Minister of Indigenous Relations in Toronto. Dear Minister Rickford, in regards to negotiation and settlement of the rest duel versus Canada litigation. As you may be aware, the Ontario Court of Appeal issued their stage one and stage two decisions on the last day of Ontario Treaty Week, Friday, November 5th. With respect to your observation in your September 8th letter that the judgments of the Ontario Court of Appeal may be issued later this fall, we now know the outcome. The general outcome of the judgment states, we unanimously reject the majority of the arguments raised on appeal. We dismiss Ontario's appeal from the stage two proceedings in its entirety. This is another, among a few other judgments by the courts that, on, that reject Ontario's legal position in the robinson Huron Treaty litigation. The majority of three judges strongly urged the parties to negotiate a modern agreement for the implementation of the treaty, finding that, it, that this is more likely to produce a strong, renewed treaty relationship, and stating that True reconciliation will not be achieved in the courtroom. In our opinion, given that all five of the Court of Appeal judges found that the Crown is required to increase the annuity, we need to negotiate a settlement. As you might also be aware, we have overwhelming support from civic leaders in the robinson Huron Treaty territory that your government should get on with negotiations to achieve a settlement which benefits all treaty people in the territory, for sure in an economic context. At an event outside Minister Vidali's office in North Bay on Friday, sponsors of a petition reflecting the views of Ontario residents living in robinson Huron Treaty Territory encourage Ontario to abandon litigation in favor of honorable negotiations. At this point, a reasonable person could come to no other conclusion than Ontario is hanging on to an untenable position. Again, we urge you to seek the negotiating mandate from your cabinet colleagues to enable your officials or appointee to negotiate an honorable settlement and to move forward based upon principles of renewal and reconciliation. We look forward to working with you. And uh, myself and uh, Chief Peltier will be signing off uh, on, on this uh, correspondence. Miigwech. Thank you, Chiefs. Do we have any uh, questions from our reporters or chiefs in the crowd at the moment? Yes. So we, we wanted to, uh, I wanted to have an opportunity, and, and I did with the Premier, to 
further provide educational information in regards to the history of the obligation that the Ontario government has uh, taken on. And um, he provides some assurances that uh, we will have an opportunity to meet in the next few weeks. Uh, he is making his way to Northern Ontario. And um, the petition was actually served on Friday at Minister Fidelli's office. Uh, um, I also provided him with the new magazine that also highlights a number of perspectives and a number of lenses into our Indigenous communities around our perception in regards to the treaty and some facts that I think all readers and all uh, Ontario citizens would probably appreciate being able to take a look at. But uh, those magazines are available on our website and uh, also um, uh, available through our uh, offices in, uh, in Serpent River First Nation. You've spoken previously about the settlement opportunities, uh, or pardon me, the development opportunities that would come with a settlement like this for the signatory nations. Could you expand a little bit on those opportunities? Sure, uh, and, and I think uh, from Batchwana's perspective, um, when, when Minister Rickford uh, introduced me to the Premier last week, he introduced me by, by reflecting how Indigenous First Nations leadership are conducting business. Uh, we find a place for ourselves in the economy and we don't knock on the door, we, we kick the door down. We want to be a part of the economy. We want to invest in Northern Ontario. We want to create partnerships. We want to meet the unmet needs that maybe the current governments are, are unable to provide. We look at um, a lot of the, uh, the softer types of industrial in investments and we look at uh, international involvement with the economics that we see on the horizon for not only ourselves but all of the municipalities, all of the townships, all of the people in Northern Ontario. We truly want to go down th that road of partnership and sharing that we talked about when we first entered into our treaty in 1850. So uh, it, the times are exciting and it's and it's a good time to be in partnership with, with everybody. Yeah. Just want to add a, add a little bit about the, uh, as you're saying, developments. I think uh, in in this in this day and age, what our people are asking for is not necessarily a partnership. What we're what we're looking for is equity ownership. We want to be full owners of opportunity in our territory. It's it's high time that we we are able to do that. Miigwech. Thank you for those comments. Check. Thank you for those comments. Now we do have a question online. I guess this question would come for the chair or from our legal side, uh, from Dave uh, Negobo. Um, the, I'm just pulling it up here. The North Big Nugget has asked, has the province made any indication yet on its next moves after the petition was delivered? Dave. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Dave Nawagabal. I'm uh, Nishnabe and um, one of the legal legal team, one of the legal team members on this case. Um, it's a bit early now. The decision from the Court of Appeal was just handed down last Friday, and my understanding at, at this point in time is uh, is that. The lawyers for Ontario are analyzing the case, and we have not yet heard from Ontario as to what what their reaction will be to that decision. I also, we haven't heard anything either from uh, the government lawyers about their reaction to the petition. Hopefully, that will be forthcoming though shortly. Miigwech. Another question here from APTN National News. So I guess, Dave, this probably is going to go back to you. Uh, do you think that this original court decision and appeal decision will have ramifications beyond Robinson-Huron Treaty? In other words, to other Treaty First Nations in Canada, they're looking for fair compensation. Well, it does. It will have ramifications. It is uh, a unique treaty in that it contains an augmentation clause. Uh, no other treaties in the country have that kind of a clause. So 
It has a limited application to the Robinson and Superior Treaties with that regard. However, there are uh, bigger implications to this, uh, to these decisions, both the Court of Appeal decision and, the, of course, the trial decision of Justice Hennessy. They really elevate the discourse on treaties and elevate the nature of the treaty relationship to the original intention of the treaty partners and try to um, infuse the ideas that were prevalent among the treaty partners at the time. And in that respect, I think the, the, uh, the uh, decisions have the potential to resonate across the country uh, in, in you know, elevating the, uh, the nature of the treaty relationship and the, the implications of those findings for other treaty cases across the country. Miigwech. Miigwech, Dave. So is there any other questions that we have from media in the crowd at the moment? OK. Uh, we do have our chair as well, Mike, here. Mike, do you have any closing comments that you'd like to give to us today? Stephen. Honey, bojo. Bojash dej na kaz. Nabi sing don jaba. She can do dem. My name is Muskrat. I'm from Nipissing First Nation, and I'm of the Turtle Clan. And I'm also, I also have the pleasure and the honor to be the chair of the Robinson Huron Treaty Litigation Fund and the Litigation Management Committee. But more so than that, I have an obligation as an Anishinaabe, as an Anishinaabe man to do what I can to uh, make the world of the Anishinaabe people better as I live in the land. This beautiful land belonged to these people before the treaty was signed. The people agreed with the Crown that we should share the land, not to give it away, but to share the land, also to share the resources. And when I say share, I mean we should get benefits from the land as well as everybody else here. We know that there were trillions and trillions of dollars earned by, the, by settlers in our territory, and yet our communities are among the poorest. It's not right, and that's why we brought this case to the courts. We have won every step of our process to this point. And if it's litigation that Ontario wants, we are prepared to go there. But we, being a peaceful, peace-loving people, we prefer to sit down and talk about our relationship, the relationship that is so important in this land for us to live together in peace and harmony. So. I just wanted to pass those words on so that everyone knows that we are the Anishinaabek of this territory and we own this land and we should have a share of the benefits. Oh, miigwech. Oh, miigwech. So if we don't have any more questions for the media, I just want to thank our Ogima and our chiefs here today, our chair, our lawyer representative as well, and media for showing up today. Uh, say chi miigwech, and thank you everybody for coming today.